Uh, my name is Michelle Bollinger. I am the coordinator for career services here in our college. I see um, undergraduate students all the way up to our graduate students and any alumni that also need help. Um, today we're going to talk about building an effective resume and a curriculum vita. So by starters, we're going to go ahead and talk about resumes. So what is a resume? Um, a couple of weeks ago we talked about your cover letter, how that's really your first impression. Um, that employer will have of you, but a resume is going to be that self-promotion document. Um, so it's going to be really everything that you've done, your education, your experiences, and your skills, what will really sell you as a candidate to an employer or to graduate school for individuals that are going to graduate school. Um, the visual appeal, it needs to be professional, so you want to make sure you draw attention to the accent, uh, I'm sorry, to the aspects, and you want to make sure you emphasize that. Um, each bullet should be an action verb. This is going to vary for CVs, um, but on a resume you want to make sure you're bulleted. Um, my suggestion is to use past tense um, so it's consistent. It follows that consistency. Um, sometimes I'll have students or candidates or alumni or even administrators will talk about having um, present tense um, action verbs for those you know, current positions, and that is fine if you choose to do that. Um, I think that when someone reviews a resume or a CV, it's very subjective. So it's really whatever you're most comfortable with. Um, my suggestion is to use past tense. And then strategic, your most important information needs to go on a resume. It varies from that CV, which is going to include everything. Um, there's different types of resumes. There's chronological, functional, and combination. Um, the most traditional type of resume will be chronological. And so it's going to be everything from most recent um, to the least recent with education always coming first at the top. The functional is going to focus on those professional skills. So maybe if somebody's lacking some formal experience, so this would maybe be somebody that's gone through school, hasn't taken any breaks, um, hasn't really had a career, they'd be more of a functional type of resume. Um, and then a combination, it'll be somebody that's maybe been a consultant, something of that nature where you can use work experience and professional skills um, to really self-promote yourself on your resume. So constructing your resume. These are the components that you want to make sure that you have. At the very top, and I gave you guys some handouts, um, the samples that I gave you of the resumes is what you can look at at this point. They are available online on the Career Services website for education. Um, you can download those as well, um, but the first you'll see there's that identification. So who are you? That is what has to come first. Um, and any information for your contact, whether it be your address, your email, as well as your phone number. Your education will always come first on a resume. So if you're working on your doctorate, that's going to come first, then your master's and your bachelor's or any other degrees that you have in there. Um, you're going to have your professional experience. I do want to point out really quick, in between education and professional experience, um, sometimes people will have an objective or a professional summary. Typically that's not common on an educational resume, but will be on a CV, and so we'll get to that in just a minute. Um, but your professional experience will come, so anything related to the field in which you want to um, start a career in. Your relevant experience. Um, this is anything that is related to your field, but maybe it wasn't professional experience. Um, your work experience, so anything outside of that field. Uh, volunteer experience, activities, memberships, leadership, and academic honors. Now, not everybody will have every component on their resume, but this is the layout that you would typically follow if you had all those components. Do you have any questions about the layout of that resume? So your formatting, um, this is when it gets to be fun for me because uh, this is when I get to play around with some resumes. Sometimes I'll have candidates that come into my office that will have um, a one and a half page resume or one and a quarter. We really want to try to make sure we keep that down to one page. Um, resumes can be up to two pages. I know that that's um, a myth sometimes that's thrown around, but for an education resume it can be up to two pages. Um, anything over that, you get into the CV world. Um, but you do want to try to keep it to one page if you can. Your font size, you would like to keep it to an 11 or 12. However, you can go down to a 10 size font. But it has to be a font size that um, you can read at a very small font. Um, Cambria 
is one that I have found, if I'm saying that correctly, uh, that I have found that a size 10 that actually works really well. Um, your bullet points, those need to be after every experience that will um, describe what you did in that position. You want to have your clear heading and titles. So that's going to be your headers. So education, professional experience, relevant experience. Um, and then you also want to have your name to be the biggest piece, um, I'm sorry, the biggest component on your resume. So my advice, and this would actually go over to a CV as well, is if you, you can use a 10, 11, or 12 size font, you can use anywhere from a 0.7 margin to a one inch margin. Um, you can, in, anywhere in between though, you can have a 0.77. The biggest piece of that is that they need to be equal on all four sides. Um, again, it's just a layout, it's just more appealing to the eye. So I could have a 0.72, but all four sides need to be 0.72. Um, so if I use a 10, 11, or 12 size font, my headers are going to be my font size plus two. So if I have a 12 size font, then my headers will be 14. And my name is going to be my font size times two. Um, I always get asked questions about where did those come from? Why is that there? And so they're just, it's just really to make it look more appealing, to be honest. Um, I didn't just pull it out of thin air. So it really does make a difference. Um, but so if I had a 14, I'm sorry, a 12 size font, then my name's going to be a 24. And you guys can do the math on, on the other one. So um, it just, it really does help with the format and the layout for that. Um, so what to consider, you want to make sure you have your audience in mind. So who are you sending it to? Um, are you going to apply for a teaching position, for a university position? Because it may need to look a little bit different. Your professional experience may differ from, you know, job to job. Um, your goal. So you want to make sure you have those skills necessary. Um, so maybe you did work at um, a company that involved three different main skill sets. Well, which one do you really want to make sure you highlight that maybe stands out and is different from job to job? Um, the length, again, we kind of talked about that, one to two pages. If you can keep it to one, keep it to one. Um, your focus should be representative of your um, experience, um, your essential information, and then your references. I know on a CV, references are usually combined, but with a resume, references will typically be a separate page. Um, and that separate page will have the same header, which will include your name, so your identification information, your name, um, and your um, address, email address, and phone number. That'll go on the same header as your reference page. But typically, it is the same document. My advice also with references is to not put references available upon request because you should include those already. It's just kind of things to keep in mind. Um, there's some do's and don'ts before we finish up with resumes. Um, you always want to make sure you use action words. Um, I have a list on the Education Career Services website that you can download because you want to make sure you don't repeat the same words. Okay, coordinated, coordinated, you know, developed. You don't want to keep using the same words over and over. Um, you want to make sure you're consistent. So the biggest um, piece that I see of consistency is past tense or present tense. If you have completed a position, you want to make sure everything is past tense. Um, again, my advice is to use past tense all the time so you don't have to worry about going back and changing everything. Um, you want a conservative font style, so you don't want to use anything like calligraphy or anything that's kind of crazy out there. I would say you know, Calibri is okay, Times New Roman. Um, Cambria, those basic types of fonts are okay to use. Um, and you want to make sure you're, you're identifying your strengths um, on your resume as well. So with the don'ts, um, you do not want to write in paragraph format for a resume. That's going to come more along the lines of a CV. Um, you, wanna, you do not want to include your high school information. Um, a lot of the candidates I talk to are usually bachelors that have that resume, so we want to make sure we don't use our high school information. You don't use abbreviations, so we want to make sure you spell everything out. The only thing that I have candidates that do not spell um, out is maybe Missouri. You could put MO if it's all capital letters, depending on the space that you have um, on your resume. Um, you don't want to rely on spell check. Um, that's never a good thing to do because for some reason it doesn't catch everything all the time, or there could be different meanings for different words. So you always want to make sure you have somebody check over your document. Um, and I would always have two to three people actually check over your document as well. Um, and don't ever exaggerate your experience because if you get an interview based on that resume and you're not able to actually talk about what is on your resume, then that's never a good thing either. 
So are there any questions about resumes? Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and go on to building an effective CV, which is also called the curriculum vita. Um, vita is also sometimes V-I-T-A-E, so if it's not up there, don't, um, don't worry if that's the way you spell it, because that's fine. Um, this is really going to be everything that you've done in your professional life experience um, that will go on a CV. A CV is three or more pages, typically. Um, I do have some that are maybe two pages, but typically they're going to be three or more pages. Um, was, there are some master students that will have a CV, but the majority it will be from a doctorate on, um, which is our audience now, so hopefully this will be um, good for you right now. Um, it's really a marketing tool, again, to promote yourself. So similar to the resume, but very much more um, in depth and involved and about you holistically as a professional. Um, you want, so two plus pages, like I'd already said, but it does usually run a little bit longer than that. Um, CVs can be condensed depending on your audience. So I know that there are some professors that have 20 plus CVs but they can condense them sometimes depending on their audience and who they're going to be meeting. So that audience is still important. Um, there's four different styles of CVs. We have functional, performance, targeted, and combination. Um, so your functional is going to concentrate on your skills. Your performance um, will be, if you want to be seen for your major achievements. Um, targeted, uh, the that's going to be for the requirement of the job in which you're applying for. And then the combination, this is what I see the most. I usually call it the hybrid. Um, it's going to be really a combination of all, all of those because it's going to have all of your experience, um, all of your strengths. Um, it will be targeted because you will typically, from what I found in my experience, uh, have somebody that wants to be a professor, well, that's going to be targeted every time. So kind of thinking about how you want your CV uh, to flow as part of the, of the style. Um, so constructing your CV, you want to make sure that you identify that purpose. So how will it be used? Um, skills, education, experience, and you want to really focus on those transferable skills. Um, I see this a lot with athletes I've met with. I have a couple of athletes that are in our doc program, and so um, the ones that I've met with really want to focus on those transferable skills that they've learned as an athlete um, to go into the job, the workforce. Um, identifying the core skills and your competencies, so um, really pointing out your organizational skills and your leadership skills for examples, and identifying your major achievements. So your projects, the tasks, the research, publications, um, all of that really needs to go onto your CV as well. Okay, so what should it include? I have a handout that I gave to you. Um, I actually retrieved this from my friends over at the NU Career Center. We are a separate entity from them. However, they have um, a lot of the resources for CVs, and so I've talked to them about using this information. Um, so I kind of want to go through um, on the what to include, and this is everything that you can include on a CV. If your CV does not include this information, that's okay, um, but this is a really good guiding point for that, and you'll see similar things up here. Um, the overview and objective is what I want to kind of look at right now. That is something that I talk about on a, on a resume that isn't typical. But on a CV it is. Um, so definitely okay to make sure you have that. Your academic and related employment, um, research projects and experiences, professional development, service, and your reference list. Again, this can be part of your CV, which is what I typically see, or it can be a separate document. Um, depending on your goal, what it is you're applying for, this sheet of what to include may move around a little bit. So if you want to be a publisher, you know, something may move up, the publications may move up to the, to the forefront um, over the research. So just kind of keeping that in mind. Um, you know, I, I give this presentation as advice and as just really a, a guiding point, a starting point, um, because the most that I get out of, of my students, so you, if you were to come and see me, us to be able to sit down and to really just go through your CV as you would like it. Um, if you're an online or distance student, we can do that via email. 
Um, so I have a cheat sheet of what I call it um, that I go through and say, you know, I may have a couple of questions for you. What would you like um, to have on here? What do you really want to pinpoint? Um, and we just kind of create it for you. Um, there are not going to be CVs that look alike typically. So uh, they may look similar, but again, um, you know, how do you make yourself stand out as well? And that's something that we can do um, for that one-on-one -on -one appointment. Um, so tailoring your CV for the position. Um, if you're applying to a research university, you want to make sure you focus on those research projects um, or your presentations that you've done. If you're applying to more of a liberal arts, then you want to really focus on um, the teaching and the student um, component. Um, so it is going to be a difference. The important thing to remember is that um, you need to make sure that you have the information that's going to be most helpful for you and for the employer as well when creating your CV. Um, I have some candidates that will have several different types of CV. They'll have one for the higher ed component. They'll also have something similar um, but adjusted for corporate if they want to go that route because some of their transferable skills they can use in both settings. And that's something that I can help you create as well. Okay, so some CV do's. Um, confident tone, always, always, always a positive language. Um, we kind of talked about that in the cover letter as well. You always want to make sure that anything that you put forward is positive. Um, con concentrate on your achievements and not necessarily your responsibilities. So that's going to be a little bit different um, than the resume. You want to make sure they read on. So like that cover letter, what are you giving them at first so they want to read on you know, to the next pages uh, to figure out more about you? The quality um, and not the quality, quantity, excuse me, is, um, is, is something that you really want to make sure you, that you concentrate on. So what types of awards did you get? You don't want to put every award on there, but you want to put your most, um, I guess your best awards, so to say. Um, really rise above the competition. So what do you have that the other candidates don't have? Um, should that come first? And that's something we can definitely talk about. Sometimes I'll have candidates that come in, they've gone through the same program as their peers have gone through, maybe they went straight through. <laughs> what have they done that is different than their peer? Um, so how can they really set themselves aside from that competition? Um, you always wanna make sure you update your CV. And I know this is hard, um, and, I, and I say this, and I'm not actually the best person <laughs> to, to, you know, to, to say it, because it's, it's difficult once you get started, like, okay, I got started, and you know, months pass and you're like, oh, I've got to add this, I've got to add this, especially if you're getting presentations or if you have publications, as soon as you start writing it, put it down and it could be, you know, um, you can have parentheses that it's, it's in progress right now. Um, then once it, once it is out of progress and published or whatever, then make sure you mark it, mark it so. The reason is because, I mean, if you give you know, 10 presentations or if you have 10 publications, you only put two down because you're like, oh, I remember those. It's gonna take that much more time to, to kind of track everything down. So having everything down as soon as you get it is the best time to put it on there. Um, and again, just checking, just making sure somebody looks over it. So your professors can certainly look over it. I know they offer great advice here at the university. Um, I can certainly look over it for you as well. Um, and just having your, your peers maybe look over it as well, because sometimes you'll look at a document so long that you're just like, oh, it's perfect, and then some, somebody will come and read it and be like, uh, this was spelled wrong, or something like that. So just having multiple people look over it. So some of the CV don'ts, again, not expanding that truth. Um, don't include a photo. Um, that's, it's actually illegal for any employer to ask for a photo due to uh, discrimination. Um, so you don't make sure you don't want to include a photo. You don't want to be really creative um, on a CV as well. You want it to be as straightforward and professional as possible. Um, typically, since they're long documents, people are going to have a lot to go through. They want to make sure that what they're looking at um, is where it should be and not have to kind of search for it in your CV. Um, you don't want to use a narrative style or abbreviations, again, that we talked about. Um, no sensitive information, so I think that you guys know, even when you go into an interview, Nothing personal really needs to go on there. Um, nothing personal really needs to be said as far as that professional standpoint for what you're going for um, in your career. You don't want to talk about you, 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 or talking cliches, um, or make them jump through their hoops, kind of like what I had just discussed. So um, keep it professional as possible. 
um, because you are going to have a lot of information on there and just really focusing on what's most important. Um, so that's really the basics. I know that is very basic that we just kind of talked about, but just about um, CVs and about resumes. Again, my best advice to you is to take and whenever I first started doing this is I would take the examples, I would look at all the examples, I would get examples from professors or from colleagues, kind of see how they laid theirs out to see what I liked. And you may go through, I have gone through at least, I don't know, five or six different types of looking of what something looks like. So um, I think a great example though is what is offered from the MU Career Center, which is on this handout. Truman Tyga is our candidate. Um, and what, the way it's laid out, this is the way that I will typically assist candidates in setting up their CV. Um, if you have, already have a CV and um, you want me to look at that, we can go with your format. If you have a resume and you want to transfer it to a CV, that's something we can do. That can be difficult sometimes, so um, just knowing that in advance of how I can work with you is always, is always the best. So when you set up an appointment, just let me know that. Um, but this is going to be your basic type of layout for a CV. So if you're wanting to switch your resume to a CV or maybe reformat your CV, now's the time to do it. Um, once you graduate and you get out there, it's going to be probably a little bit harder. So um, now's the time, I would say, to really do it while it's all fresh as well.